when hope is gone, undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. Dead body. Hi guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fan fiction story. If you like this type of content, smash the like button and subscribe for future updates that I post on my community tab frequently. As we start our story off on Earth, Earth 2 of the multiverse, the members of the Trinity, Earth 2 version of the Justice League, Prepare, uh, prepare for the incoming threat. A uh, uh, threat of an unknown being named Darkseid. As we cut to a scene in Gotham City in a very old laboratory in Gotham. Where Mr. Freeze is tending to his wife. Nora. From giving a long painful birth to their son. Nora took a liking to the name Deku for its double, positive, double meaning. Ever since Batman helped Victor, aka Mr. Freeze, cure his wife from her dead, a deadly disease, he has stopped his villain ways and lived peacefully with his wife. Years has passed. Victor and Nora notice their son has special abilities creating ice like it's clay from a young age. The moment Deku manifests his ice powers, Victor and Nora trained and nur nurtured his gift. When Deku powers develop, he was only six years old. Short pause in Earth 2. There are no quarks. There will uh, be quarks in the prime Earth, but that's. Oh, oh, I'll worry about that later. It's only reason Izuku, well, Deku has ice powers is because of his father's genetics that mutated and forming abilities for Deku to control. Their peaceful days as a family would come to a halt as several boom tubes manifest all around Earth as the pair of demons come flooding out. As a boom tube appeared in the middle of the laboratory, as a swarm of pair of demons come flying out, surprising the family, they were taken off their guard by the instant appearance of a portal. Mr. Freeze took his free ray gun from the holster on the wall and pointed at the pair of the pair of parademons coming through them coming through through the portal. As his wife is holding their son in a protective manner, as Mr. Freeze shot his free ray Freezing several of the parademons, unfortunately, he was L overran and forced to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, yelling at Nora to escape with their son. Get out here, Nora. Find Batman. He'll be able to protect you. I love you, my love. As Nora watches her husband get overran and overran by the parademons. As she ran through the exit, Nora grabbed firm onto her son and ran out the door as a single tear dropped from her eyes, seeing her husband being torn to pieces by these monsters that disappeared out of nowhere. She loved her husband deeply, but 
but her main concern right now is the safety of her son. Nora found herself surrounded by a small army of parademons surrounding her and all pointing their pointed weapons at her and, and, and her child. As Earth 2 version of Killer Croc saw his friend being attacked when, when he exited the sewer, as Killer Croc rushed towards where he sees Nora being surrounded by these strange creatures. Seeing his friend in peril stride, Killer Croc slash and pierce his way towards her as Killer Croc punch his way to Nora and caught her in his arms with, with the young child still in her arms, coughing up blood. <coughs> Take him, Croc. My son must survive. He's the last thing I have. I won't let these monsters take him away from me. I gave him a sedative. He should be out for the next couple hours. His name is Deku. Deku always, always liked Killer Croc when he always came by to visit Nora and Mr. Freeze. Killer Croc became good friends with Mr. Freeze and Nora over the years. Swear to me you protect him. I swear, Nora. Get out of here. They're coming. Killer Croc picked up the, the small child with care and put it in his arms and left to the sewer systems as the pair of demons surround Nora and finish her off by stabbing her with several of their spears, killing her instantly, piercing through her heart. Several years has passed. Earth defenders, the Trinity, all fell in a battle against Steppenwolf, leaving the hero community scattered and defeated by watching the most powerful members like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, to fall to the might of the invaders from Apopolis. As you see a 10 year old Deku, Deku freeze, scavenging around for some supplies while trying to, still while trying to um, invade the parademons that patrol the city streets. As Darkseid has formed a presence in many cities like this, including Gotham, where he currently is. Ever since Killer Croc was, oh, was killed a year ago, he's been left, he's been left on his own to survive. As we cut to a flashback a year ago, while Killer Croc and Deku were sleeping, they were swarmed by a swarm of parademons come rushing through the sewer system where Killer Croc was protecting the remaining survivors of Gotham City. Deku shot out several ice spikes from his hand towards the pair of demons, killing several of them. But unfortunately, he's still a kid and doesn't have full control over his ice powers. They eventually got overran. Killer Croc stepped towards Deku with several spears in his body. As several, as he, as Killer Croc swapped several pair, pair of demons away with a single motion of his claws and turned to, well, look down onto Deku. Run, kid. I'll hold him back as long as I can. Use the exit that I showed you. Survive, Deku. Now go. As Killer Croc watched Deku leave through the emergency exit out of the sewer, as he got pierced by several of the pair demon spears, ultimately killing Killer Croc with his last strength, he collapsed the section of the sewer where, well, 
blocks the chamber in the sewer, killing himself and the pair demons by being crushed to death in a flashback. Like you hopped over the window edge to enter a building to scavenge for some food. Deku began to scavenge the cupboards of the building, rummaging through the kitchen, finding any box items that holds food in them, and threw them in his backpack until he was broken out of his musings. By the sound of battle outside, Deku left the kitchen and leaned against the wall right next to the window to peek outside to see what's going on, only to see a pair of demons. Seeing a older teen girl wearing a red, black, and yellow costume with a pendant connecting the cape that has a R labeled onto it with pitch black hair and a ponytail and some sort of black mask over her eyes wielding a staff fighting against the pair of demons as a second figure made herself known as Supergirl, Supergirl comes flying through blasting several of the pair of demons with her, her, with her heat vision. Deku decided he needs to leave the area. They're causing too much noise. Last thing Deku needs to come across Steppenwolf. He knows full well crossing that man's path is certain death. Deku's not powerful enough to face a strong opponent on that caliber. He's only 10 still. Deku ran towards the kitchen and swung the backpack over his shoulder, only to see several pair demons get thrown into the building. As they slam against the wall, a second later they got up to turn around to see Deku. Without saying a word, Deku raised his hand outwards towards the pair of demons. As the whole side of the building shot out with ice, forming into ice spikes, destroying the buildings around it, devastating a good portion of the pair of demons outside. You see the young boy running out and carrying a backpack, shooting ice at the incoming pair of demons, giving chase, mowing them down before they could even get close to Deku. Robin. Survivor. Let me try that again. Robin. Survivor. On it, Supergirl. As Helena give chase, grabbing the small, the small child, and use her grappling hook to get onto the roof of the building. I got you. You're safe. Let go of me, you winch. As Deku proceeds to shoot ice in her face, as she was forced to let him go, as a small boy went into a slide from the pure speed that he was descending down, as he instantly created a ice slide heading to the street, or the, down to the street level. That little brat, when I get my hands on him. Supergirl hovered down to her friend, worse the kid. The little brat got away. And how did he even ma manage that? With Supergirl's raised her eyebrow at her friend, that little urchin shot ice at me. I'll handle it. It seems you don't have a neck for handling kids. Shut up, Kara. Let's see you handle the little brat that can shoot ice out of his fucking hands. Deku turned turn a few corners, then head into an alleyway, seeing that flying blonde woman he saw earlier shoot he vision out of her eyes, vaporizing a couple pair of demons when she first appeared, flying through the alleyway. You notice the blonde was trying to get his attention. Ducky was too busy creating ice walls to block the progress of the of the crazy flying blonde. Deku was surprised seeing the blonde smash right through the ice walls 
like their glass, in response, Deku created a huge ice fist and controlled it to smash right into Supergirl, making her go flying backwards into several buildings. Elna walked up to her friend, while Supergirl, known as Kara, removed the rubble from the top of her and blew a single strand of hair from her face. Not easy, isn't it? Didn't I tell you that brat was a nasty piece of work? But I can at least admit, the kid's strong for his age. He looks to be around 10, 11 at most. Supergirl dusts herself off. Come on, he can't have gone far. But you get wit. That's what you get, blonde winch. As Deku watches Supergirl go flying backwards into a couple of buildings, as the young boy turned his back and ran off through the exit of the alleyway, when Deku got to the main street, he was surrounded by a pair of demons on all sides. Shit. Deku shut out a wave of eyes all around him. Ice spikes impelled several pair of demons in his range. As few of the cars got pierced through one of the ice spikes, blowing up, Deku inhaled a deep breath and exhaled as frost breath shoot out of his mouth, freezing the remaining pair of demons that wasn't impaled by his ice spikes. Deku made sure to check his strap of his backpack, make sure it was in, intact, and couldn't and continued his pathway back to his home, heading towards a large watchtower in the distance. Clock tower, basically. Wow, as Kara was amazed at the scene to see the street completely frozen with fro frozen solid pair demons. Definitely heading in the right direction. That's definitely that little urgent handiwork. Deku finally arrived at the clock tower and went through the front entrance. Once he got inside, he went up to the stairs, leading further up below on the top floor. Deku finally got to the end of the stairs to a large area. Just in the, in the clock itself. Deku picked up a gal a gal well, a, a container of gas and begins to feel feel or refill the generators once he noticed the generator was full of gas he turned on the generator on as the electronic devices all around the room comes to life as Deku sat down in front of a monitor as Deku begins typing away on the keyboard, start to hack into the camera footage of the remaining active security cameras around Gotham City. Trying to find the safest route right out of Gotham, it's becoming too dangerous, so, De so Deku decided it's time to move on. Deku's always been extremely intelligent when it comes to electronics, computers, it always came really easy for him, like it was second nature. Deku gets his smarts from his dad's side of the gene pool. He only has a picture of himself and his parents in the last family photo they ever took together. He was too small to remember, but that picture, but that picture of him, he treasures it. He treasures it like a treasure, re regardless. That was the only thing left he has of his parents that Killer Croc gave him when he was told about the truth of his parents' death by the hands of Darkseid. Deku saw the footage of the two girls that he met earlier heading towards his direction. Deku immediately sh shut off the generator and froze the computer then play several small explosions and slid down the stairs using his ice. Then he immediately booked it out of the 
clock tower when Silvergirl was flying up towards the, blo uh, the clock tower. The, 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 sorry, the clock tower blew up in a huge explosion, knocking her back a little bit as she skid across the street. Kara saw the young boy running out of the corner of her eye. Deku was forced to stop and went into a skid across the street, seeing a tank come rolling in front of him. As the tank barrel lowers at Deku as energy as energy begins to charge. Chun Deku would shoot ice spikes at the tank. It, uh, the ice would break instantly, not strong enough to to um to pierce through the metal of the tank. For girl's eyes widen. As she increased her speed and blocked the incoming beams that came out of the barrel of the tank, using both her arm, both of her forearms to block the beam of energy that the tank shot out of his barrel, as Kara used her heat vision. When the tank blew up, she immediately grabbed on the Izuku. Goo and Kine blasts ice at Supergirl, forcing her to chop the back of his neck, leaving him unconscious and harmless. Sorry about that, kid, but I can't have you trying to kill me while I'm trying to, trying to save you. Good, you finally got the brat. He almost looks completely harmless sleeping like that. He's kind of adorable looking. Too bad about his personality, though. Well, can you blame him? We might have stopped new pair demons coming to Earth, but a lot of people here are still trying to survive. So what's the plan? Let's get out of city for now. If we can figure out how these boom tubes work, we might be able to reprogram them and to target the pair demon, the pair demons to suck them back into the portal. You still have it on you? That I do. More tanks incoming as Supergirl tossed the bloom boom tube device towards Robin. Follow me, old man. Told me a while back of one of his bat planes that's stored in one of the one of the warehouses up ahead, just for emergencies. Well, Hannah. Well. Helena, run towards the warehouse, dodging laser fire from the pair demons and tanks, while Supergirl is dodging the incoming fire while flying and protecting the small boy in her arms. As both girls got to the warehouse and boarded onto the bat plane, as Helena start up the engines, popping, preparing to take off. As she placed the boom tube device in the spot that she modified to put into the bat uh, to the bat plane, as the bat plane took off, dodging incoming fire from tanks and pair demons, everything was going fine until a stray shot hit the bat plane as a spark of electricity emanate from the controls of the bat plane, traveling all the way to the boom tube device. As, as sparks emanate from the boom tube device itself, a huge unstable portal open up as both girls get sucked right into it with the plane. Because of the rush turbulence going through the portal, Supergirl and Robin fell unconscious. And when the plane exit the other end of the unstable portal, they crash into a forest between Gotham City and Metropolis on Prime Earth. The first one to regain consciousness was Deku. He removed, he removed the arms of Supergirl that was latched around him in a protective manner and opened the cockpit and exit out of the plane hatch. Even the two older females in the plane 
as Deku get his bearings and aware his bearings of his awareness. He's unaware he's no longer on Earth too. He's clearly unaware that he's on Earth. He's not on Earth too, but he's been transported to Prime Prime Earth. Deku made his way to Gotham City, considering Gotham is closer to Metropolis. Deku noticed something's not right. The forest is untouched. He clearly remembers this forest was being burned down a few years ago. When he arrived at Gotham City, he was shocked once again. Surprised to see people, the city intact, and people moving along doing their daily lives like they were never attacked from Apopolis in the first place. No parademons, no Steppenwolf, no tanks patrolling the streets. No dark side, like it never happened. What the hell's going on? This looks like Gotham, but not one I'm familiar with. Where the hell am I? Deku immediately started to pickpocket people to get some cash. He determined, he, he's determined to figure out what exactly is going on here. Deku found himself eventually in front of a clock tower that he clearly remembers blowing up the last time he was here. He snuck inside the big, huge room, completely empty, no sign of any, any, anyone living in it, any signs of someone living in it. It can't be. If I'm correct, I'm not on the same earth. I highly doubt this is some sort of illusion. I can still feel pain. And that means the theory on a multiverse is actually real. But the question is, how the hell did I get here in the first place? Those two winches did. Clearly did something right for once. I'm free. No more just surviving day by day, expecting attack from pair demons. Or the or or that bastard Steppenwolf. Always running for my life. But that doesn't mean Darkseid won't come here. I need to prepare. I'm on a different earth, that means mother and father might live on this earth. As much as I would love to see my parents, they would have no idea of my existence. And there's a possibility there might be a double of me. But I'm not certain. I would rather not deal with that. I'll just keep my distance away from the mother and father. Father might still try to... Father might still have mother in stasis because of the illness she has. I need to recon the city to see what changes compared to my original Earth and this Earth. There might be some similarities. And the likelihood of major differences is pretty certain. I'm going to have to play this smart. I cannot allow myself to... I can't allow myself to someone figuring out who I am. That would cause unnecessary attention to myself. I must lay low for now. A year has passed. Kara and Helena discovered they're on a different Earth. So Thurber Girl changed her outfit and name and became Power Girl. While Helena Wayne took off the Robin mantle and created her own. As she goes by Huntress. A girl and Huntress are still looking for Deku. Deku, on the other hand, found uh, easy access to extra income by getting hired by Penguin to make ice sculptures for the Iceberg Lounge. It's not, but it's not much, but it is enough to live off. Penguin came across Deku manipulating ice and approached him, approached the boy to offer him a job as his personal ice sculpture. Sculpture, or I don't know what they would be called, but sculpture. Artist, basically. 
for his nightclub. And of course, Deku agreed. Flashback for the first encounter that Deku had with this version of Penguin. Deku was training his eyes by making them, making the ice in different shapes in the Iceberg Lounge parking garage. The long limousine stopped in the parking garage. Penguin noticed the young man molding ice like it's clay. Stay in the car. As Penguin got out of the limousine and walked towards Deku, Deku could sense someone uh, approaching, but he paid them no mind. He's concentrating on his ice training. What a marvelous gift you have. What a marvelous gift. You're quite adept at it. I've seen... I've seen my share of ice users from my... Jordan was a marvelous gift. You're quite adept at it is. I've seen many people with ice abilities as yours, but you're far more advanced. They're clearly not at your skill level. Name's Penguin, young man. Deku. A Japanese name. You don't look entirely Japanese. Oh, about me being Japanese, but that was the name I was given by my mother. Where is your parents, by the way, my, my lad? Dead. I'm sorry to hear that. You have my sympathies. You don't need to worry. I got over it. So is there a reason why you're trying to talk to me? Penguin took, took no offense to the boy's tone. He knows majority of ice you wielders or users that have ice powers you usually have a cold personality trait be, uh, because of their powers. I do have a specific reason why I approach you, my lad. I would like to offer you a job. I could use someone with your unique talents. And what exactly, what type of job would you want me to do? I don't plan to kill anyone anytime soon. I don't get anything out of it. You got me all wrong. I'm a lot of things. Not even I would, would hire a child for killing a grown man. To hire you specifically for your ice abilities. Currently in need of someone to sculpt ice for me. For my for my nightclub. The Iceberg Lounge. Of course, I'll I'm more than I. Of course, I'm gonna pay you handsomely for it. Handsomely. Uh, huh. Try this again. Handsomely for it, of course, my lad. And judging by the state of your clothes, even living on the street. So how about it? You want to come work for me? How much? Let's go to my office and we can figure something out, my lad. Follow me. Deku crushed the ice rabbit he created in the palm of his hand and followed Penguin into the iceberg lounge to the second story to the pink in walking into the into Penguin's office. As the lounge itself was closed. It's currently during the day, so it's the nightclub is only open at night. Deku and Penguin negotiate the price. They eventually agreed upon 800 a statue. Rest of the year, Deku created different sculptures. He's been very well paid. The bigger the statues, the more penguin, more penguin will pay him. It all depends on the size of the sculpture. As we cut to the end of the flashback, Deku's in his room in the Iceberg Lounge on the second story on the internet comparing the difference between his earth and the earth he's currently on. Deku heard a knock on the door to his room. Enter. As Penguin entered the room walking with his cane, I hope I'm not interrupting anything important in my 
my lad. Nothing too important, Mr. Penguin. How can I help you? Aseku shut off his laptop that he bought that he bought was the very first pay payday he got from Penguin because of the because of his eye sculptures. I'll be leaving the country for a few months. I want you to take care of things while I'm away. I got the bat's attention, so I need to lay low for a few months. And I figured this would be the perfect chance to take a long long earn vacation. So that's why you've been teaching me what you do daily around the Iceberg Lounge. But why? You have earned my complete trust, my lad. For the small amount of time you've been here, you've proven to me, you've proven to me quite resourceful, smart, highly intelligent, loyal, and you can keep a cool head in an intense situation. But the, but the simple fact that you took in care of several assassins that were hired to kill me. Of course, you won't be doing it for free. I'll pay you, like always, my lad. Very well. I'll take care of everything. I knew I could count on you, my boy. I'll take my leave. A few days has passed as Penguin has already took his vacation. As he took his private jet out of, out of the country. That goose is sitting in Penguin's office. On his deck. Going through the paperwork. Booking. That's required to be taken care of ever so often. To make sure all the money is going to the right places. As the door to the office opened up to reveal two of the penguins' henchmen coming into the office. Good, you're here. I want everything set up for tonight. I want everyone on the high alert. The Iceberg Lounge has a reputation to uphold, and I will not have any funny business goes under my watch. Do I make myself clear? Understood, little boss. And please double check the guest list. I don't want any rats sneaking in. We'll we'll make sure we double check, sir. Good. Now get to work, boys. I have plenty of work to do myself. Deku returned to his work without even looking at the henchman leaving the office. Man, he's even stricter than Mr. Penguin. And you're surprised about that, man? His eyes wilder. They're more like that when it comes to their personality. Bosses know they're uh, different. He is cold, calculated, ruthless. He might be the temporary boss, but I don't want to go. I don't want to get on his bad side. On the small bad, well, I don't want to get on the small boss's bad side. We can agree upon that, man. Let's get back to work before the little boss freezes us to death. Several hours later, Deku was double checking everything in the empty lounge of the Iceberg Lounge, making sure everything is set up perfectly when they open up, open up the nightclub later tonight. Several well-armed men come bursting through the door, all wearing masks over their face, marking them as the goons or the henchmen of Black Mask. Before Black Mask henchmen could open fire, they were all pinned to the ground by the variety of different ice sculptures that came to life. As Deku came down to the stairs slowly, judging by their neat little costumes, they must belong to Black Mask. I had a feeling he would try to do something the moment the word went around that Mr. Penguin is out of the country. I guess a show of force is necessary. Take this, take these scum away, kill them, chop their heads off, and send them back to their boss, Black Mask, and dispose of the rest of the body. The rest of you, gear up. Clearly, Black Mask has broken the treaty. It's time to make an example out of him. Be geared up and ready to go in 30. Understood, little, understood, little boss. 
The moment the sculptures stopped pinning the goons to the ground, all the penguin henchmen closed the deck you dragged the prisoners away to be exterminated and have their heads chopped off, mailed off, packaged package up and mailed off to Black Mask as a um, sign of warning. A, a sign, a warning sign. Deco look at his watch. We have about four to five hours to take care of this mess. Then I need to, then, then I need to be here for the open up of the Iceberg Lounge. I don't know how Mr. Penguin deals with this crap. Deku walked up the stairs to the second level of the Iceberg Lounge and walked back to his room and shut the door of his room and pulled out a book halfway from his bookshelf, opening it up. As the bookshelf opened it, or the bookshelf itself opened up to reveal a metal door with no handle. Only way to open a door is a small eye scanner. As the scanner scanned Deku's eyes, as it opened up, up to reveal a cold metal room filled with different firearms that was converted into freeze rays. Deku picked up a freeze ray gun that looks like a toy and load up the blue like liquid into the toy gun and loaded it. Deku has adopted the same fondness for freeze rays like his father, Mr. Freeze. He inherited his fondness for freeze guns alongside with his superior in in intellect. Deku's skin might not be blue, but his blood is. His blood is a bright glowing blue color that freezes on sight and he's and he also inherited a slow a well almost also inherited a slow aging process like his father it just won't fully kick in until he's 18 years old of the genetic traits he got from his father Genetic traits is clear. Is his genetic um, traits are currently in hibernation, waiting to activate it when his body fully matures. Deku put his freeze ray in his inner coat of his white coat that seems to have some sort of long ears. In the hood of the coat, as he locked off his armory and walked out of his room to the to the front waiting for the the henchman to finish up getting ready to move out we're all geared up little boss good we're we're moving out we're uh, we're on a tight schedule we need to be back here in time before the opening let's make this fast and quick let's Let's head to Black Mass's loading docks. Ward around the Great Line. There's a very big weapon steal going on. We're going to interrupt their little powwow. Let's let's move out. Deku. Oh, sorry. Get get the vehicle. As the henchman walked away, and as he came back, driving a black van, stopping in front of Deku. As Deku got into the passenger seat. Boss, don't you need a booster seat? Deku narrowed his eyes at the man. You like being frozen. I could definitely make that happen for you. Now shut up and drive. As the henchman that mentioned the booster seat, shut up. The look that Daku gave him clearly expressed he wasn't joking. He would actually do it. Sorry about him, little boss. He doesn't know when to shut up. He's kind of a smartass. I would advise you boys to get your head on straight. Get ready for action. If I hear any comments about my height again, I'll make sure I'll make sure to make you one of my new sculptures. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Good. After some time, Deku noticed they're getting close. All right, boys, we're almost there. Check your ammunition. 
It's the freeze race that I made for you. And please, turn the safety off. The moment we exit the Zan, they'll most likely won't take kindly to our intervention, so they'll most likely fire upon you. I expect some of you may die. As the van screeched to a stop in front of the loading dock behind the warehouse, by doing so, interrupting the arms steel between Black Mask and some foreigners, several Black Mask goons kicked open the crate and took one of the injury weapons and started to fire upon the van the moment the doors opened to reveal Penguin's men. Deku created an ice dome around the van, dome, and immediately, this dome immediately shot out ice spikes in all directions, cutting down several members of the Black Mask henchmen. Deku got to, Deku got all his minions in position when they exit the van. Then he dropped the ice dome. As they fire fight commence, one side shooting energy weapons, the other side is shooting less advanced cryo weapons, collided with energy beams. Deku pulled out his freeze gun and shot the incoming henchman that was trying to flank from the side. The moment Deku shot the goon, he was completely frozen. Then a second later, the frozen man shattered into a million pieces. You three, use these. As Deku tossed several cryo grenades towards, uh, towards his allies, they caught it in the hands as they proceeded to throw the cryo grenades, freezing several of the henchmen on the other side and several crates of, of, of beam rifles. As a small pellet fell from the sky, as black smoke shoot out of it, of the small, small round black ball, as Batman appears in the middle of the smoke, we're leaving boys. The bat's here. I'll cover our escape. When Ducky got enough well, distance while they're driving away, create a huge ice dome covering the entire warehouse, including the, including the dock behind the building. Batman to fight the remaining henchmen of, of the Black Mask. The moment The moment, oh, the moment the van drove off, you could see a huge ice dome in the distance that Deku created with his eyes to give him enough time to escape. Deku is sitting in the passenger seat, holding a tracker between his fingers as the bat-like tracker between his fingers he saw on the van as he slowly froze it in short circuit the interesting looking tracker as the young ice wielder crushed it between his fingers. Smart bats. Smart. But not smart enough. Deku formed a smirk on his face that did not go unnoticed by the henchmen that are currently in the van. None of them, none of them, none of them were stupid enough to bring it up to his attention. They don't want to be frozen and made into one of his sculptures. Several hours later, you see the Iceberg Lounge open, ready for business. As this is a full packed house, Deku is sitting in the VIP spot, eating an ice cream sundae. When Deku finished his snack, he looked around to see who's in the Iceberg Lounge. There were several typical rich businessmen enjoying themselves. Deku eventually found Harley Quinn is in the crowd. Deku is fully aware, fully aware Harley Quinn is blacklisted. She's on bad, well, she's on bad terms with, um, with, the, with, with the penguin. But she wasn't causing any trouble, so he let her be. The woman next to her with white hair, blue eyes, and by her nervousness, 
the moment she, her nervous movements, she's clearly not used to being in this sort of atmosphere. As the pale white hair woman looks like to be a younger version of Deku's mother, Nora Freeze. Izuku's blue eye, blue eyes widen a little bit. Seeing his mother in the club, he's been trying to keep his distance away from the version of his parents that live on this earth. Because he doesn't want to deal with the hassle of explaining things, it's too much of a hassle for him. It's bothersome. You two, henchmen, come here. It comes to my attention Harley Quinn is attending. Would you be so kindly to direct her towards the VIP section with her friend that's by her side? And please, bring them gently. No hostility. Am I clear? God, if you hurt the woman in white hair with the white hair, I'll make you my newest sculpture. Do I make myself clear? Yes, little boss. A few minutes later, he saw Harley Quinn, a bit nervous, walking with a young Nora. As both women sat across from Deku, confused, Harley was expecting Penguin, not some 11-year-old kid with black hair and with black hair and glowing blue eyes, eating an ice cream sundae. Please, ladies, have a seat. That's where we're going to stop our story off right there. Hope you guys have a good night and day judging my time zones. And I'll catch you in the next video.